Hello, my friends. It's Haya Bin Shabbat. Welcome back to our daily series, Behind the Scenes Bonus Content on Homeschooling Secrets. How to blend your child's education with your occupation during global isolation. So we are still in a season where more and more schools are getting the announcements of closing through the end of the academic year. I think over the half of the country's states are already closed through the end of the year. And them are still ongoing uh, and extending their announcements, extending the school closures. And of course that's spreading through Europe, Australia, Asia, et cetera. So we are all in this together, there's no doubt. I actually love today's topic. We're at secret number 12, which is that homeschooling is not school from home. What does this mean? Well, this is something that I really had to work my way through for about a solid, I would say almost a year of homeschooling myself when I was uh, first homeschooling my son several years ago. And I was trying so hard to replicate school. So basically, what does that mean? It means that I was recreating a school environment, a school atmosphere at our kitchen table or you know, at his computer. So we had charts and we had schedules and we had you know curriculum outlines and we had I had bought an online program one year I did a uh, I had a workbook shipped to me another year and I was trying based on what I knew best based on on what I knew at the time and just based on what I knew about my own schooling experiences in a very traditional mainstream school all the way you know from kindergarten through high school in in small town Texas I was creating the school at home environment. So, you know, we did one subject for half a break. We had another subject for half an hour, took a little break on and on throughout the day. And it was so regimented that, you know, he was stressed, I was stressed. And if we were, you know, one minute off the, the buzzer or the alarm with our, with our subjects, that I was all freaked out and stressed out that we were falling behind schedule and I was, you know, very hardcore with my uh, regimented schedule. And as we've talked over the last couple of secrets, I've shared with you that that is absolutely not necessary. Now, if you have been following the, um, I think it's the National Homeschooling Association, they have numbers that are quite shocking. Their numbers say that elementary school kids need only one to two hours of homeschooling per day, that Middle school kids need two to three hours and high school kids at most need three to four hours of homeschooling per day. Now that is totally shocking when you look at it compared to how long our kids are sitting at school. So, you know, there's a couple of reasons for it. One is that honestly, parents need their kids to be occupied for that long so that our we as parents can go to work and make a living and come back home. The other thing is that when traditional or mainstream schools or as all public schools are forced to do, whether they're an excellent school or not, and there are many, many, many great schools out there, but they are all forced to teach to the middle. And so by the time you're putting the, the systems and the programs in place so that everybody can file and filter through them, you know, what could be done in two to three hours is stretched out to where it takes eight hours. Okay, so that's why you're seeing such a drastic difference between homeschooling guidelines and mainstream schooling guidelines. So then what on earth do you do with the rest of that time? Well, actually, there are a lot of homeschoolers that will tell you if you were to go into their home, what you would be doing on a typical Saturday is what their typical weekday looks like. So it's really just business as usual. It's life as usual that because they're not having to work so hard to fit everything around school, the school day and the school week and school hours, everyone is less stressed. They can move at a more leisurely pace and they integrate things with mom or with mom and dad, whoever is at home and, and being a part of the, the homeschooling environment. So they might run errands together. They might, you know, do sports together. They might, um, you know, prepare for holidays together. They work around the house together and everybody has their 
um, divided responsibilities and their roles. Everybody has their hobbies, the things that they love to do more and to do less, and they'll rotate things around. So it becomes a, a very um, different version of normal, but it's a, it's a very relaxed and home felt environment. So yes, they have some times where they're doing learning throughout the day or the week, but it definitely does not have to be hardcore, you know, nine to four all day, every day. Now, having said all of that, if you look at my book, Little Black Book of Homeschooling Secrets, and you look at the appendix in the back of the book, and I shared with you over there some examples, an example calendar and schedule of what I do with my own son uh, when I'm home, as I'm homeschooling him now, and then, of course, what I did in the past. And if you see, he does have a schedule that actually goes from nine to four. And then he has a morning routine of things that he does before that, and he has an evening routine of things that he does afterward. Why do we do it that way? Simply for one reason and one reason only for my sanity, because I do work from home. I run multiple businesses from home. My husband and I run international businesses from home. And so we have to have structure and we have to have routines within our day. So what we found works best for us is that we give my son blocks of time where he's working on different projects, different activities, whatever the case may be. And then whenever he gets, when he has successfully completed those uh, focus projects or that focus chunk of time, whether he's working on, you know, writing an essay or whether he's doing some learning on one topic or another, when he successfully completes that topic, then he is able to move on and he is able to, uh, to play or have some free time or some downtime other things. And you'll see that in the suggested schedule that I gave. Okay, so a lot of questions come up about, okay, well, I tried to do that with my kid and you know what, he's taking shortcuts or he's trying to just do as minimal as possible. And if I'm not there looking over his shoulder, then he's not really doing it. Da, 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 da. So I will tell you this. First of all, it takes some trial and error. There is definitely a learning curve that goes with anything new that we're working to adapt and develop into our routine and, and, and a new skill set for sure. And remember, this is a new skill set for you as much as it is a new skill set for the child learning to take school or go to school from home. Okay. Now, the other thing that I would say is that um, in addition to the learning curve, there's also a little bit, there's an element of unschooling and deprogramming that's going to have to happen. So what do I mean by that? Well, right now our kids do a lot of things simply because they are trying to escape from the mad hatter rat race of school. So when they come home and they're on their computer all day, or they're um, trying to escape, you know, and they're just unhappy in their environment because it's too stressed, too high tension, whatever the case may be, then they are escaping reality by going into those devices or, you know, um, going into the video games or whatever the case may be. So as we slowly help them deprogram from that high stress environment or from that, 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 that tension, that has them so much on edge, they're gonna have to get to a point where they're literally gonna have to swing that, that pendulum the other direction to where they realize, oh my gosh, you know what? I do like being at home. This is comfortable, this is fun. This isn't as stressful as it was going to school. I enjoy being with my family. And as they start to have these aha moments and these realizations, then they are naturally gonna decompress and they're naturally gonna come out of that, that cave. Now, of course, I'm talking a lot about older kids here, okay? And you as mom or dad or whoever is the parent or the caregiver doing the homeschooling are gonna have to ask yourself the question, am I creating an environment where my child loves being at home? And the answer to that question right there is going to dictate everything else. It is going to be the hinge that your door opens and closes on to where you can build that bridge to build a relationship with that child so that they can start to heal and feel whole again if they were stressed and strung out in the phases before. Okay, please let me know if you've got any questions about this. I am more than happy to help. And like I said, it can never be a one size fits all scenario. We've got to figure out what's working best for our family in their situation. And this is where us as mama bear, or papa bear have to take ownership and responsibility for customizing this situation for each kid in our own situation. 
Hope that helps. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback. And if you know anybody that could use a lifeline, please feel free to share this with them.